Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to St. Mary Parish as we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. My name is Danielle and I will be our cantor today. We prepare ourselves to receive the Lord in the Eucharist who makes us one with him and one with each other. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Dan Whiteside, assisted by Deacon Dan Jordan. Today, let us remember in our prayers, Marcy Gunderson, Josephine Offman, Larry Offman, Stefania Dragan, and Bejan Ben. In reverence for the liturgy, please check that you have silenced your cell phone as we open our hearts to God's grace. Also, a reminder for us all to please keep your face masks covering your mouth and nose throughout our time together. Thank you. Please stand. Come together, we are celebrating the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ. As we celebrate this feast, we prepare our hearts to enter into this mystery as we open our hearts to the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you nourish us with your body and your blood. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your body and blood satisfies our deepest hunger. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us of all of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's praise God in our glory.
Almighty God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and in blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. This afternoon's first reading is from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Unblemished to God, 
cleanse our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promise, eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it in new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At Mass, which we are at, <clears throat> at Mass, in a little bit, we enter into the liturgy of the Eucharist. And when the priest pronounces the words of consecration, take the, this is my body, take this and eat. This is the cup of my blood, the cup of the, the blood of the new covenant given up for you. In those words of consecration, after that, then the priest, I, I will normally genuflect, and then come up and say the mystery of faith. We normally have some kind of response when we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Yet, really, that utterance of the words, the mystery of faith, although that is calling forth that response for us, really part of the purpose of that phrase is to point up the mystery that, that we are in at that very moment. The mystery of the consecration that just happened. Oftentimes we refer to, we think of mystery as if we were not in church and we thought of mystery and what is mystery, do you like mystery? Oftentimes we may think of, say, 
cops and robber mysteries. Mysteries that we watch on TV, or mysteries that we read in books. Oftentimes those mysteries are things to be solved, whether it's a, a show or a movie or a, a book. The, as we watch it or read it, we, we pick up new clues and we watch somebody beginning to place the mystery together and be able to solve the mystery. The mystery of faith, though, is not necessarily something that we can solve in that kind of way. Actually, the mystery of faith is really solved by faith alone. It is drawing us deeply into the body and the blood of Christ, drawing us deeply into the presence of God in our midst. It is a mystery. As we say, the mystery of faith, we are drawn into the mystery at this table, and we are filled with awe and amazement, for the bread and the wine have become the body and blood of Christ. We don't know how this happened, and we can't really solve that mystery. We don't perceive how that has happened. When we say this is the body of Christ, we do not see with our eyes. We, we don't see Christ with two arms and two legs. We, we can't deduce how this happens through logic, nor can we deduce it through science. It is purely a matter of our faith. It is purely a matter of us placing our trust in God, that when Jesus does tell us, take this, this is my body. We place, make an act of trust in the Lord, that this is true. And we make an act of trust also, as we are here at Mass, by tending to that moment, by being fully present to that moment, without any other distractions and things running through our minds, what we need to do after we leave, after we leave Mass today and things like that, to, to be fully present to the Lord as He is fully present to us. What we experience is the, the awe and the mystery of the presence of Christ Jesus. What fills me with awe is not only do is this something that we I can say, oh yes, the Lord is present, but actually even to, to personalize it. The Lord is present to me. The Lord is present to you. What are another set of words that we say later in the Mass? Lord, I am not worthy that you come under my roof, but only say the word and I shall be healed. I am not worthy. How can my Lord want to come to me? That's what fills me with awe. That's what fills me with amazement. That as we celebrate and make present the body and the blood of our Lord, that He wants to come and to be with, with me and with you. Do I deserve that? No. <laughs> Not at all. But nonetheless, our Lord does desire to come and to be with us. I think as we receive the body and blood of our Lord, one thing we recognize is that even though we may not be worthy, Jesus came to save us. He is Savior and Messiah. Are any of us deserving of Him coming into our life? Do we deserve a d divine presence? Probably not. Are we perfect? And are we in a perfect state of affairs internally? And we're perfectly prepared, we're perfectly cleansed to allow the, the Lord to dwell within us? No. But the Lord wants to come into us anyway. He came not because we are cleansed, not because we are perfect. He came to save us. He came to heal us, to make us better, to make us cleanse, to make us holier, to make us 
like Him. And we can't do it without Him. We need that divine presence in order to do it. We can't avoid Jesus and say, oh, I'll, I'll invite Him into my life or I'll receive Eucharist on the day that I am perfect. <laughs> Will we ever receive Him if that's the case? No. <clears throat> we have to invite Him knowing that we need to be saved, that we do need to be healed. We can look at our public actions, the, the ways that we treat one another, in terms of, do I need Jesus healing in my life? How do I treat others? Yet also in, in the privacy of our hearts, in the privacy of my heart and your heart, where those thoughts are that we don't utter out loud, we invite Jesus into that, that place also. Because that is a place where all of us are in need of healing. Places in our hearts that we, we don't utter aloud. That's exactly the place. Jesus comes and wants to bring us healing in our life. Wants to bring us wholeness. Wants to be our Savior. We may not always live up to our faith. We may look at others without speaking of it, but we may look at others with some kind of judgment or prejudice. Allow Jesus into that space. Allow the Lord, the body and blood of Christ, to come and to be that Savior. That's the purpose He came. Not just for us to say, Oh, I'm so blessed the Lord came. Are we blessed enough that we allow Him to change us? That we allow Him to help us to become like Him. We can't change God, but God can certainly change us. That's why He came. And so as we do celebrate the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, we do get an incredible amount of comfort in the Lord's presence. But we also want to make sure that we allow the Lord to, to do His work. Allow Him to be Savior for us. Allow Him to make changes within our life so that we can open up our hearts and stop some of the things that we want to let go of. So that we can live the faith in ways that we are proud of and not hide from the Lord. We will open up our hearts and admit that we need a Savior. And we pray that He may change us so that we can go forth and help others. So that we can show the presence of Christ to others. So that we can be the presence of Christ to others. We stand together and profess our faith in our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the power of the Spirit, He is the heart of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, He was crucified and conscious by us. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered together around the table of the Lord as we are, we surface our prayers for the needs of all of our sisters and brothers throughout the world. Our response is, Lord, Lord, guide us in your ways. Lord, guide us in your ways. We ask the Lord's blessing upon our church, 
that we may be a sign of unity and an instrument of peace in a world torn by war and division, we pray. Lord, guide us in your ways. For those who lead nations, that the Lord will strengthen them to bring food to the hungry and fairness to all who are discriminated, we pray. Lord, guide us in your ways. Many people hunger for meaning in their lives. May the Lord's presence in the Eucharist guide them to fullness of life, we pray. Lord, grant us in your ways. For all gathered here as the body of Christ alive in the world, may we seek to be bread that is broken and wine that is poured out on behalf of others, we pray. Lord, grant us in your ways. We ask the Lord's comfort for all struggling with physical and mental health, and for those living with long-term disease and aging, this weekend we pray especially for Maria Rodriguez. May they know God's gift of healing, we pray. Lord, guide us in your ways. For those who have died and now share in the light of Christ's resurrection, especially Jerry Made, may they and their families find comfort in the resurrection, we pray. Lord, guide us in your ways. We now quietly bring our own personal prayers, needs, and hopes before God. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, guide us in your ways. O bounteous God, through your living bread and precious blood, you lavishly provide for all of our needs. Hear these and all of our prayers that we may share your divine life with others. Through Christ our Lord. your sacrifice and offering be found acceptable by God, our Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of God's holy church. O Lord, grant your church, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings that we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. For at the Last Supper with his disciples, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb the acceptable gift of perfect praise nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery you make us holy so that the human race bounded by the world may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity and so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities that are here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all of the angels and saints, cry out in one voice as together we acclaim. 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Yes, Lord, you are holy indeed. Truly, you are the fount and the source of all life and of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread into his hands, giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we do celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, Lord, we offer to you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that in partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and with the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also all of our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the many ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life in heaven, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we all receive the body and blood of our Lord, we are one in the body of Christ, and so we pray to our one Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on our face as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you.
As a reminder, as we do come forward to receive the Eucharist, our uh, hands will be sanitized as we come forward. Um, we're keeping our masks on. Please, please keep them up and to receive the Eucharist into your open hands. And then once you receive the Eucharist and you're six, about six feet away from your communion minister, uh, to then pull your mask aside and to consume the Eucharist at that time. Thank you. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
My brothers and sisters, since some of us are unable to share the most blessed sacrament in the same manner as we are accustomed, I invite us to pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, grant, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and your precious blood. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few quick announcements. A refreshing way to be involved in this parish is as a catechist in our gift program. G-I-F-T, our religious education program. You don't need to be a religious expert, but you will learn much about our faith by helping our parish youth learn about their faith. Growing in faith together, get it? G-I-F-T, there we go. Catechists are needed for our six summer sessions and in our school year sessions on Wednesdays. Please contact Terry Tenez in the Religious Education Office. Contact information for her is in our parish bulletin. This spring, a new tree was planted by the Women's Club in front of the church by the Statue of Mary. Tomorrow, Sunday, there will be a dedication of that tree following the 10.30 a.m. Mass. All are welcome to the dedication following that 10.30 Mass. By all accounts, um, the Archdiocese of Chicago has been tying its practices <laughs> has been tying its practices regarding regarding uh, our, our practices in church and COVID. Um, they've been tying it to what the state of Illinois' um, uh, stages are. As the governor has pronounced that on Friday, June 11th, next Friday, that uh, the state will be entering into phase five, which is a full reopening. The church will also be entering into a full reopening. I wanted to have a burning with these ropes, but actually we, <laughs> we're gonna use them later. <laughs> But that also means, um, um, this is all anticipation, uh, because it's not official yet, but what we're anticipating uh, is uh, that there will be no more need, need to sign up for masks. Um, yes. Um, there will be, masks will be optional. It will be the same as the state of Illinois. If you want to wear a mask, uh, wherever you are in public or in church, if you still find comfort in that, Fine, and I encourage all of us to uh, be tolerant of one another. If somebody wants to wear a mask, good for them. Uh, but also the state is suggesting that if somebody is not vaccinated, that they also do wear a mask. And so we are following that same thing. We're not carding anyone. We're not asking any, anyone what their status is. Um, so if you want to wear a mask or if you, you should wear a mask, good for you. Uh, if not, uh, then we certainly are free to be mask-free here in church. So that's incredible news, too, especially as our heat is turning into the 80s and 90s now this week. Um, there will be a lot of other uh, small practices and things, that uh, adjustments that we have made at Mass that we are going to be needing to put back into place. And to be honest with you, uh, it's so numerous, and Deacon Dan and I have been talking and you begin to talk about one thing and you forget about you know another thing that we haven't done in a year uh, and so um, it's going to take us probably a few weeks to begin to put things back into place i believe we'll be able to throw, put the hymnals back into the pews and we'll be able to have um, congregational singing 
I think we're gonna have to be honest with you, learn how to sing. <laughs> a lot of people in writing this out say, oh good, I don't have to sing. Um, so let's, I think it'll be a great opportunity to, to raise our voice and to remember that song is a way that we praise God and we pray to God. So, But um, the point of me saying this right now is just simply, as you come to church next week, there will not be a need for a sign up. You can leave your mask at home if that is the case for you personally. Uh, and um, our, we can see, sit wherever we want on this side and that side. Um, and uh, there won't be any more ropes up. So thank you all for all of your patience through this. And I think in time also, uh, we need to have a special thank you for all of the people who have volunteered our way through this this whole time, who have given a tremendous amount of their, their lives uh, to, uh, to keep us all safe. But thank you all. blessing to send us forth. Lord, through your most holy body and blood, enrich your people with your grace. Strengthen us by your abundant blessing, so that we may praise you for all eternity. We ask these blessings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.